Hello guys and welcome to our first guide on Dyson Spear program and don't worry you can expect a let's play series coming from me very soon too. Now these are my 20 tips or 20 plus tips if you're starting out and for more tips be sure to subscribe to my channel as I regularly do guide videos. Anyway let's get to it. So number one mechs need fuel to run you can harvest wood and plant matter however it's best to use more efficient resources to fuel your mech so use coal and automate it as soon as possible and store stacks of coal early on also do note that you can stack multiple fuels in your mech Tesla poles do give off a radius. This circle shows the pole's reach of power. Also bear in mind that later on you can research more advanced poles which span greater distances and these can also charge your mech. Well worth investing in. Don't worry about mistakes. You're able to delete buildings and the buildings will then appear in your inventory after. Just make sure that you do keep at least one slot free in your inventory for it, otherwise it will be removed from the game. Cue actions holding shift and right clicking. You can also cue crafting and research. This will use energy in the background, but it will save you time in the long run. Another thing to bear in mind is the statistics statistics panel which you can open with P is great for giving you an overall idea of how your factory is performing and where you can make improvements. Mark 1 belts move 6 items per second which translates to a max throughput of 360 items per minute on a Mark 1 belt. Now that you know this plan your factories accordingly which actually brings us to our next point. Harvesters produce 30 ore per minute per node that they cover. So here you can actually see the total amount of items per minute this particular harvester is harvesting. And also note that's a total of 12 nodes per Mark 1 belt. I normally cover it over to harvesters. You can also raise belts up and down by clicking the up and down keys and you can also merge belts by dragging the conveyors into one another. You do not need to use a splitter. However, splitters allow you to choose priority splits and they can also be used to merge. And if you click the tab key, you can set different types of splitters. These different types of splitters can be really useful depending on the build. Whether you have lots of logistics lifted up or whether you're using them as elevators, they can still be great, so do bear that in mind. Most buildings need to use sorters to transfer items from the belts. You can also take items directly from and into buildings using sorters most of the time. This is great for linking the thermal power plants or also for smaller manufacturing centers. Sorters have a given speed per tile that they cross and so longer sorters will take more time. So you may want to double up your sorters on your inputs or outputs if they're spanning longer distances. Sorters can also set a filter by clicking on them. This is great for buildings like refineries which have multiple outputs. Buildings with multiple outputs will also seize up if you, one of the outputs is fully saturated. So make sure that all your lines are running smoothly. If you do not provide enough power to your factory, it will just run at a lower speed. So try to overcompensate for your power needs if you want an efficient factory. Can't do efficient factory ratios? Well, just build buses for materials and use sorters to create manifolds, taking items off the belts as and when required. Need more resources? Just add another bus of resources. The most important thing is to automate everything, no matter how inefficient the build is to start. Make sure to remember to upgrade the mech. The tab is found next to the technologies tab in research. You can also stack buildings saving on space. Not all buildings do stack though, so just bear that in mind. Things like the research buildings and storage. On the subject of building, you can actually activate God mode in the settings to give you better viewing angles. Early game, create a storage area for your items so you can easily collect them. This saves you running about your factory and it will also save you from collecting items off belts, which you can actually do by clicking the icon when the belt is selected. You build using drones and they have to fly to the item you're constructing in order to build it. They also need to return to you prior to building the next item in the queue and all of this takes energy. So make sure you are close to them 
for speed and fuel efficiency. Learn the hotkeys to help speed things up. Some good ones to know are the copy a product by using the left arrow bracket key and then you can paste it to another production line with the right one. X also opens the delete key, C opens the mech panel, E opens your inventory and F for crafting as well as many more like we mentioned P earlier is for the overall statistics of your factory. You also have a whole planet at your fingertips. In fact, you have multiple ones, so use as much space as you want. There really is no reason to build compact mini factories and then struggle with the logistics. Spread them out if you need to. So there you are guys, over 20 top beginner tips to help you get started in Dyson Sphere project. Now if you did enjoy this then let me know what your favourite tip was and remember we're starting our Let's Play series later this week so be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Anyway guys we are going to leave it there, thank you so much for watching and also a huge thanks goes out to our supporters, most notably our Solo Clips patrons The Calamity, Bo Papa and Cerebral Tag, as well as our Lunas, Matt Lippard, Chris McCabe and Lord of July, and finally, our Blood Moon of the Day, Jimmy Rogers. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.